Welcome back. I'm Amy Henderson with the Georgia Municipal Association, and we are live in the hall at GMA's 80th annual convention. We're here in the exhibit hall. We've got a whole bunch of exhibitors showing uh, their services and products for our city officials, and we appreciate Aileen introducing us to some of them. Thank you very much. And I am joined by Paul Radford, who is our Deputy Executive Director at GMA, and has been, who's been very involved with one of our, our initiatives at the Capitol over the last year, and we had some really, and we've got some really good success with it. It did not pass this, this first year, but um, I think we have pretty high hopes. We've got a lot of support for it, and that's the Renaissance Act. Paul, will you tell us a little bit about the Renaissance Act, how how it works and and why cities are so supportive of this. Yeah, yeah thank you. The, the Renaissance Act is um, is a series of state tax credits for private sector investment in our downtowns. Why is that important? Well, because our downtowns are the heart and soul of our cities, mm -hmm. and our cities are the economic engines for our whole economy in the state. And we have a unique opportunity with a partnership with state government to put in the hands of private sector resources, state tax incentives. And, and those are state income tax. State income tax okay. ta incentives for making investments and creating jobs in our downtown. And you're right, we had great success last year. We had almost 90 signatures on the bill when it was dropped in, in January. And those it, are both Republican and Democrat uh, supporters. Bipartisan support, urban, rural, uh, it is a, um, it is truly a a, a, a great um, uh, partnership mm -hmm. with the, um, in terms of all economies of the state. Now it takes 91 to pass a piece of legislation in the House, it, it, so it's but it's not that simple. <laughs> you know we have to um, we have we still have to go through the committee process, right. and we had a great uh, hearing. We did not push it last year for a number of reasons because I think all good things have have come in time and right. have their wait. We are now in earnest doing it again, trying to get our folks um, um, uh, up and motivated again mm -hmm. to do what's necessary to get this before the leadership this coming session. Right. And Representative Alan Peake out of Macon is the lead um, legislator on this piece yes. of legislation. And I know I've heard him talk about it, and, and I think he really, you know, he understands the impact that it would have, particularly on his town in Macon, where Macon has done a lot as far as redevelopment and used a lot of the tools. This is yet another tool in the toolbox, but it's not really so much for cities as it is for the developers. It's for the private sector. And, and my understanding is the way this works is there are different levels of tax credits available, and those levels are based upon the, the um, basically the amount of public support that has already gone into a downtown. So, for example, if they've done streetscapes, if they've done infrastructure improvements, if they've got certain, I guess, ordinances and commissions and you know groups in place, then they could, those developers would be eligible for a higher amount of tax credit in that area. Is that Can correct? I take you to the Capitol to help explain <laughs> this? No, that is exactly right. Is that you know, We can't go to the state government and ask them to give us um, authorized tax credits for investment in our downtowns with businesses in our downtowns without saying as public officials mm -hmm. and as the leaders of cities that we're willing to make investments as well. And so those cities that make the um, um, investments and are investment ready, right? And the, 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 the higher the tax credits for the private sector okay. investment. And so it, it would be things like ordinances, things like uh, parking, you know, water, sewer, it could be telecom, it could be wireless, um, wireless. What are the necessary infrastructure investments that are going to make this a good thing for investment? Right. Because we want these tax credits that are provided to these to return a, a capital to the state right. and create jobs. Right. And I, what is the, I know you you've got some figures on what the return on that investment is, and where, where yeah. similar things have worked in other states. What is that return? Well, for every dollar of, uh, invested, three dollars and thirty-one cents of state of funds are going to be returned to the state within mm -hmm. five years. It is going to leverage about $16 of, um, of other ex of, of investment for every dollar invested. Mm -hmm. It is going to create, for, um, every million dollars of tax credit, it's going to create 100 to 150 jobs. Wow. You, you t we, we, we give a lot of um, uh, coverage to the big invest, right. the big- uh, The Kias. The and Kias the and the Pulte Homes. Right. And, um, 
and the Caterpillar, and those are all important manufacturing. Right. But we feel and we believe, given what the statistics we have, that the Renaissance Act conservatively will create 2,500 wow. jobs a year That's cool. in our downtowns right. across the state. So we're going to be bringing a Kia to Georgia every year with these tax incentives. Yeah, I can see why the state you know, leaders would be very interested in that, and obviously you know, our local folks too. And um, what do they need to do now? What, what, is, what can local officials do now to help get this passed? We have we've spent the year um, messaging, branding this. Mm -hmm. People know what the Renaissance Act is at the General Assembly. We have now received the endorsement of the Georgia Bankers Association, the Georgia Realtors Association, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, the, the Council of Quality Growth, the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, the Georgia Downtown Association, wow. the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So we've got those folks, Georgia Power mm -hmm. is, on, is on board with this, and obviously this is, um, they're a heavy investor in our downtowns around the state. But what our city officials need to do next is that they need to talk to their local chambers of commerce. They need to talk to their local bankers that, that, that do loans downtown. Right. They need to talk to realtors that are representing people who want to buy or want to sell real estate downtown. They need to talk to their members of the General Assembly, mm -hmm. and they need to talk to the governor's office. Okay. But most important, I think, that the message needs to get to the governor's office that this is a good for Georgia mm -hmm. and good public policy in terms of attracting jobs and investment to Georgia. And I think one thing that we should note, it's, it's interesting, you know, the, the, the theme of our convention this year is the next generation. And for the video that we'll be showing at the opening general session this afternoon, we talked to some economists about what is the next generation going to look like in Georgia. And one of the things that we heard was it's going to be a service industry, that it's that cities need to be incubating the smaller businesses and supporting those smaller businesses in the downtown because that's where the jobs are going to be. It sounds to me like this Renaissance, the Renaissance Act would totally tie into that. Oh, definitely. I think the the, the one thing that all studies show us in, in all literature you read across the country is that the cities are the future mm -hmm. and that to be successful you have to be in a position to attract the young and, and attract the creative class. Right. And that young and that creative class may not necessarily have a job there, but they want a, they want a place where they can live, they, right. can, they can connect with people, they can, they can um, connect with them um, with in, in, in various social environments. Uh, they're they're going to be very involved in the arts and very involved in the community, but they can do their job from anywhere. So That's we're right. attracting people, not necessarily businesses. That's right. But what we want to do is investing in downtowns is create a market in a place mm -hmm. that they can identify with. That's right. And, and people do identify with their cities. Even if they even if they don't live within that city, they that's the city they're from. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now are we going to be, you can be talking about this further at the um, convention at one of the policy committee meetings, I we'll, believe? We'll be talking at, um, at the community development policy committee meeting. At our general session this afternoon, there will be a one-page flyer right. on their chairs that will talk about what they need to do to help. Okay. And that is, we need their action now to right. start communicating this and message to the leadership. And we need them to talk to their legislators, but also to ask their business leaders, their chamber of commerce, their developers, for, ask them to call legislators yes. as well. So the legislators are, are understanding that it's not, this is a, it, it does help cities, but the direct help is actually towards that those business owners first and it foremost. is this, this this is all about entrepreneurship right. this is all about private sector right. investment it's a great public private mm -hmm. partnership and yep. i know our georgia cities foundation we've been doing public private partnerships for a long time we, we with have and been very very successful and we're looking forward to even making it even more successful okay. in the next 10 years okay so we're looking forward to this passing this year next year when i'm sitting this there i hope we can go Woohoo! We yeah, did it. Right, and All we right. can start talking about the first cities that have been, you know, able to use that, or the first developers that have been able to use exactly. it. Exactly, and the we cities. and we can really see the Renaissance statewide. That's gonna be awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna go back to Aileen, meet a few more of our vendors, and then wrap it up for today. Thank you. Thank you.